Hey everyone, welcome to Mountain Beast Mysteries. I wanted to do a part two video uh, on the Carlos Diaz footage. If you've seen my last video, I kind of go over his experience encountering these massive orange light ships, as he refers to them as, these giant UFO craft uh, down in Tepetzlan, Mexico. And in this video, I wanted to specifically talk about this one piece of footage that he recorded of this craft actually projecting a beam of light. Now you have to keep in mind when you look at the footage, this craft is estimated to be at least over 60 feet in diameter. And they were able to figure this out by measuring it um, against a tree that was in one of his other pieces of footage, which I talked about in my last video. However, the way this thing moves and the way it kind of wobbles in the footage, it, it seems like it's not in this reality in the sense that it's not abiding by our laws of physics. And I mentioned that in the last video. It's easy for one to look at it quickly and say, well, this is weird looking. It just kind of looks stationary with a little bit of wobble. It looks like it probably could be fake. But they did measure this thing out to be probably as large as I said, 60 feet at least. So keep that in mind. The weird thing about the beam of light is that where it projects from the craft, it's actually dimmer than, you know, at the bottom of the frame. If you, if you would imagine something projecting light, you would think that the light would be brighter from the source of origin. However, in this case, it's dimmer, which doesn't really make any sense. Like if a guy was hoaxing that, if a guy like faked this footage, if it's not real, you would think that the beam would be brighter towards the craft. And you can see also the beam is narrower by the craft too. So, I mean, you could argue that maybe he found a way to project it from the bottom of the frame towards the craft. But then you'd have to find a way to get the light to be narrower, you know, the further out it is, usually with, you know, with lights, any kind of lights you can get a hold of, you can buy. Um, when you project them, like the beam becomes wider the further away you get. Like if you think of a really powerful flashlight, the beam is always gonna be brighter. Now they do make ones where you can like adjust them, but this is like back in the 90s, dude. Like the 80s and the 90s. Technology was a lot more simple. We didn't have, you know, really powerful flashlights and, and lasers that you can buy nowadays. And especially down in Tepetzlan, Mexico, it'd be probably a little bit harder back then to acquire this kind of stuff. And, you know, we have to keep in mind that this craft or these craft were seen by many other people, not just Carlos. He got the best footage, but they were seen by other people. And, um, you know, you have to think if this guy's faking this, somehow he's able to conceal uh, this 60 foot craft. Somehow he's able to he was able to make it for one and then he was able to make it do these things where the light that projects from these craft is reacting in a very bizarre way like that doesn't really make any sense by you know our earthly reality standards it doesn't make any sense this footage was actually analyzed in depth by someone who's an expert in video uh, back in the day it was looked at very closely along with all the other examples of footage that he had and uh, well, you can just have a look here at this footage. This is um, a clip of the guy talking about this specific piece of footage and the unique characteristics of the light beam. At different opportunities during my encounters, I experienced how a beam of light shot out of the craft. This beam of light has the purpose to bring insects, plants, pollen, small and bigger animals aboard the ship. And sometimes we too, my friend and I, were brought aboard by such a ray. This beam directly forms and emerges from the ship and consists of the same light or energy as the ship itself. It doesn't exactly look like a large object when it's zoomed on by the properties of the edges. There are some confusing and disorienting things about it. The ray of light that comes down when we look at it frame by frame, the light on the ray comes on and goes off in the same way. 
it's darker at the top than it is at the bottom in the first frame of the seven frames that the light is on, 14 fields. And it goes off the same way, with the, the top being darker than the bottom. See, this is the top, and this is darker, the luminosity is darker than the bottom. And it comes on that way, and it goes off that way. I found in each incident where the light comes on that at this spot, this one, this one, this one, we have a little mark, a little pop mark, that looks like if it's a fluorescent painted stick, maybe it's a little bubble that was on the paint. When the object moves, it tends to wobble, like maybe it's connected to this ray is the stick. If this were an extraterrestrial spacecraft, it might not be unusual that light can move top to bottom or bottom to top at a speed slower than the speed of light because the variance is between one frame, a 30th of a second. Well, if it was at the speed of light, we wouldn't even see it in a frame. It'd be off and then on. You see what I'm saying? Sure. It'd be absolute black in one frame, and a 30th of a second later, the whole frame would be on. Now the coincidence that we might catch a frame in motion could exist, but for the fact that every single time that the ray comes on, it comes on and goes off identically the same way with it being the darkest at the top and the brightest at the bottom. Which is curious. So yeah, he basically concludes this to be probably authentic. It's really hard to debunk this footage and it's really hard, it would be really hard, especially back then, to fake this, to fake those characteristics of light and to do it on like a video camera. It's not a digital uh, camera recording to like an SD card. This is on cassette. And the technology is much more primitive than it is now, especially with all the editing software we have nowadays. That wasn't readily available to people back then. So if you're gonna be doing any special effects, you have to do them all practically in camera. And um, I mean, I'm not saying it's impossible, but when everything else is taken into account, like the size of the ship and the fact that many other people witnessed it, I mean, it's hard to say that it was a hoax. And the video itself under analysis seems authentic. I'm not a video expert, so I'm just going off what I've read online and what all these other people have said. But to me, I, th this case seems genuine. It seems genuine, and it's one of the best UFO cases ever when it comes to video evidence. There's many pieces of footage that were recorded, and there was many images that were taken. Um, the image uh, of the craft, like that first image where it's in front of his car, and you can see the guardrail, and you can see the craft reflected on the hood of the car, that same expert on video went over that photograph and he concluded based on the image and whatever you know methods he used to analyze it he concluded that it appears that that craft is projecting the image of itself onto the hood of the car and not actually like shining light onto the hood of the car and causing a, ref a reflection it's not a simple reflection it's an actual it, or it appears to be an actual image of the craft projected somehow onto the hood of the car. Like that light that's on the hood of the car that looks almost like a reflection, it's not diffused in any way. It's like it's precisely projected onto the hood of the car. And that would be really hard to fake, especially back then, you know? Because you have the full craft projecting itself in entirety on the hood of the car. It's not like a little projection from like a lens on a projector. This has all the properties of coherent light. Not diffuse light, not incandescent light, but coherent light, like a laser. The properties of the direct illumination 
and the properties of the reflected light are identical. As if the reflected surface did not absorb or diffuse any of the light. That's really strange. That's really strange. It's like the light is coming and, and bouncing off of that surface as if it's an absolutely precision polished mirror. No absorption or changing in the light characteristics at all. In fact, the brightness is almost identical. Um, these colors are not distorting and blending together. It'd be like having a red laser and a yellow laser right beside each other and they are not blending making a new color. In fact, uh, they are casting the image of this tree into the reflection here and it is enlarging it as if this is a light source casting a projected image of the trees like a hologram onto the surface here. If Carlos Diaz is doing this as a hoax, he's figured out some very clever methods. It's easy for someone testing pictures to go, oh, it's a fake, and he did it like this and like that. People that say it's a fake, they need to go do this. They need to figure out a way to do this and duplicate this picture. I can't figure out how it would be done with ordinary or even extraordinary tools and supplies that are around. We can use computers and test this thing forever, but there's some real basic things in optics and the characteristics of light that we don't need a computer to analyze those aspects of this. Try it yourself and see see what you get. It's, it's very unusual. Uh, I, I, I'm more interested in this picture than in most any other UFO pictures that I, uh, that I have seen, and it can't be easily dismissed. My conclusion at this moment is that this is an authentic picture of a very unusual phenomenon, an unusual object. I don't think it's been faked. The, the characteristics of the light are so unusual and complex that it would be almost near impossible, I think, to hoax it with the technology of the time. So, and, and the craft themselves, like I said in the last video, are weird in their, in their characteristics, so, like what they are. They're not a nuts and bolts looking craft. It's not like a metallic craft. They look like light. They almost look organic. And they're described to be that way, to be made out of plasma of some kind. Inside the craft, it's not controlled by like buttons and joysticks. It's apparently controlled by somehow interfacing with the pilot's either body or consciousness. You know? So that is very interesting. There's a theory that, um, I don't know if this is like how accurate this is, but there's a theory that UFO craft throughout like the past, you know, I don't know, I guess since people have been seeing them, would present themselves in different ways based on what human beings understand. So, for example, let's say like back in the 40s when the Roswell crash happened, our understanding of UFOs and that technology was a lot more simple than it is nowadays. You know, nowadays we talk about like quantum physics and consciousness and all this stuff. But back then, people weren't really talking about that. So these craft, these alien craft would present themselves to us as something more metallic, like a nuts and bolts flying saucer. So it's easier for us to process and understand when we see it. We're like, oh, it's some sort of ship that is being piloted by something. And as time goes on and our understanding kind of evolves of what these things are, they kind of... I guess evolve as well as how they present ourselves. They're more complex 
you know, it's, it takes a little bit more to understand them. Nowadays, it's not too difficult to understand that somehow these craft utilize consciousness to travel. So maybe like a lot of footage nowadays, they appear as light, you know? I've myself filmed weird light orbs and things in the sky that appear as light. Not nuts and bolts UFO craft. But those are just a few other things I wanted to mention. I do think the Carlos Diaz case is authentic. I just have a feeling about it. And looking at the photos and watching the documentaries on it and seeing all the, you know, all the different pieces of video evidence and all the other interviews from other people from the area who have seen similar things. It's like, how does one guy like that stage all this stuff? Sometimes the craft are really, really far away in the footage. And when the camera zooms in on them, you can see the actual UFO shape. Sometimes the craft is right in front of him. Sometimes the craft is directly above him. So he's getting all the different angles. He's zooming the camera in and out. It's like, you know, even nowadays when people are hoaxing UFO footage, they get one really quick clip, one really quick video clip from one angle. It makes it a lot easier to do. When this guy's doing all this stuff with like all the different camera angles and getting all the different pictures in different formats, like on VHS tape, on 35 millimeter film, like it really, really gives it a lot more weight, makes it a lot easier to believe that it's actually authentic. So yeah, um, in my last video when I was talking about this, I mentioned um, it was revealed that he had an experience where he was taken to this cave. And I just wanted to leave you guys with uh, the clip from the documentary Ships of Light that actually shows him explaining this. So I'll leave you with that. Thanks for watching this video. We'll see you next time on Mountain Beast Mysteries. The first time he invited me to go consciously into a ship, I saw my friend getting in first. He went through this fog-like light. When more than half of his body was inside of the light, his body got sucked in into the object. So what I did first is that I put one hand into the light to feel, and to my surprise it went through the light and inside I felt a nice temperature. When I took my hand out, I was very relieved to see it was still in one piece. So that gave me the confidence to walk in, and when I had my body halfway inside the object, I was sucked into it too. But once you are into it, there is nothing you can see. You just see yellow light all over. You don't feel your toes, you don't feel the floor, but the sensation is very peculiar, because you feel very peaceful with a lot of love within you. Once, when I came out of the yellow light, I realized I was not at the same place, but I was in a big cave. It had stalactites and stalagmites, and between them I saw several sculptures and ornaments, which were of the art of the Maya culture. This big cave was the place where the ship hovered, and there was a kind of path we walked through, and we came to another cave, and I saw there many people who were very kind to me and greeted me, very nice people. But the particular thing about this cave was that there were seven egg-like spheres of yellow light. After we got to this place, my friend stuck his hand into one of the eggs and took out a small bowl of light, also yellow, and said that this little bowl could project a ray that would touch my seventh vertebrae in the middle of the spine, and it would take all the information which is in my neurons. Once I was there in this place, he invited me to go into one of those spheres of light, or eggs of light. When I did so, I realized that all the yellow color changed, and it was not yellow anymore. 
but it was a scene of a forest from the air. It was like if I was flying, and then I saw on each of my sides a wing, the wing of an eagle, and I realized that what I was looking at was the information from an eagle, his memories that they had stored into this egg of light. 